Welcome to Season 4 of Soccer Over Gotham, an NWSL podcast covering New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC. Hosted by Ruby Pinto and produced by Gary Gibson. Welcome to Episode 114 of Soccer Over Gotham, Gotham is Tired Edition. We have a great show for all of you. Gary, what do we have in this episode? I'm tired too, y'all. <laughs> We're all tired. We'll get through it. So Gotham has a professional win in Seattle, and they snap Seattle's three-game winning streak. Then they sleepwalk uh, to a draw in Harrison on Thursday in the Champions Cup. We have a ton of news in the news section. We have a hero and a fan favorite leaving the club. Don't want to talk about that, but we're going to talk about it. (laughs) A new player gets emergency surgery, which was interesting. And Gotham gets the invitation of a lifetime. They are going to the White House. I'm excited about it. It's just it's an amazing, uh, amazing thing. We'll definitely talk about it. Uh, It's going to be a fitting tribute to their championship. Then Gotham brings back a legend in a new role. Uh, We will break down both of the games. We will talk a lot about the win in Seattle because there's a lot that happened. And then we'll talk a little bit about the (laughs) draw in Monterey since not a lot happened. Then the schedule for Gotham gets ridiculous. Uh, It's going to be home on Sunday against Gotham B, the Utah Royals, then away at KC, midweek at Jamaica, then back at home against the resurgent Caprice Didasco and Bay SC. So it's a lot. So stick with us. So Ruby, how are you? Hey, Gary. So I know I saw you yesterday at the game, but Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you about what happened to me on Friday the 13th. So it was last Friday and my cousin and I went out to dinner and then we were driving to uh, Marshall's because she was like, let's go to Marshall's. And I was like, all right, let's go. So this was around maybe 7.30 ish already. And you know, it's it's starting to get darker now earlier, which sucks. So I was driving towards Marshall's. I wasn't even going fast. I was paying attention. I was not like, you know, like like thinking about other things. I was, you know, paying attention to the road, whatever. And all of a sudden I see something in the corner of my eye. So I turn, this is my right, my right side. So I turn to my right. And then I see it's a deer. It's a deer qu- coming towards me while I'm driving. So I swerve to the left and I slow down a little. And then I heard the boom on my car. And I was like, crap. I don't think I was sad about my car. I think I was more sad that I, I thought I killed a deer in the middle of the road. So I pulled over to the side, took a look at the car. It was... It was kind of bad. So, and then I look at the deer and the deer was like in the middle of the road, uh, like in the median because no cars would go through there. It was just laying down there. I was like, crap, I probably killed it. And then I look up, I went back to my car. I was looking at my car. It was dark, so I couldn't really see the damage. And I look back and I see the deer's head pop up and like he was just looking like right, left, right, left. I was like, all right. The deer is alive. I was actually happy that the deer was alive. Went back to my car to try, like, try to take a picture of the damage. I look back and the deer was gone. So good news. The deer is alive. Bad news. I have a car that needs to get fixed. I can't Ooh. open the door. The passenger door can't open it. Wow. So when, my, when we got to Marshall's and my cousin was trying to open the door, like you just couldn't. So I was like, sorry, you just gonna have to jump over and get out the the, the driver's side <laughs> it, was good, it was a good shot i guess <laughs> i am full on halloween mode now so i'm ready Ooh. to go <laughs> decorate, probably decorate my house this weekend yeah to have, to have some fun i need a i need some halloween bookish um recommendations i used Ooh. to read like I used to read harry potter around hollywood's uh, halloween time but now it's that ruined for me so <laughs> i know you told me yesterday i try to convince yeah. you to be harry potter for a halloween this year yeah no it's gone so we're going yeah. with uh what was it uh titanic yeah I might uh, go with captain the titanic captain yeah <laughs> should be fun so let's jump into some news because we have so much to get through and the first one is some sad news first it is a team fan favorite 
uh, Katie Stangle departs Gotham and she goes to Crystal Palace and she ends her Gotham career with seven goals and two assists. Your thoughts, Ruby? I'm kind of sad she's leaving, honestly. Sad to see her go. I really thought she was going to stay at least until the end of the season with Gotham. Uh, we know we had a lot of movement with, with the roster, players coming in. Uh, she's going out, unfortunately. Uh, I believe she was a player that that was a key player for Gotham in 2023. She really helped the team during the World Cup last year when pe- when some of the players were gone. So just best of luck to Katie and uh, good luck in uh, Crystal Palace. I mean, all indications seems like that's just what she wanted. So good for her. And there is no 2023 championship without Katie Stangle. She yeah. showed up in the midseason. Gotham had three goals uh, in five games. And we were, they were floundering a bit. They were starting to lose games and lose momentum. And then they came in. She came in and Gotham scored 10 goals in the next five games. Uh, just a great spark to the team. And obviously, who can forget that goal in Portland in the yeah. downpour? The, I, I could still see the ball hitting the back of the net <laughs> and just the water just flying off the back of that net. Amazing. Just sad that she's leaving this club, but happy that she's hopefully where she wants to be yeah and yeah hopefully she gets to go to the white house because you do not go to the white house like in a random day you just got invited so hopefully she can make it yeah let's just jump to that uh we uh, gotham is invited to the white house uh, uh the president will welcome gotham to the white house to celebrate their victory in the 2023 national women's soccer league championship on monday september 23rd so that is next week and the visit represents the first time an NWSL team is recognized for its championship win. And that is a major benchmark for a moment for women's professional soccer. And then in attendance is going to be Allie Krieger, uh, championship MVP Midge Purse, Juan Carlos, and Jessica Berman, the commissioner. Just an amazing, uh, amazing accomplishment. And again, this is the first time it's going to happen for an NWSL club. Just over the moon about it. Yeah, amazing. Gotham FC is they're just making history. Keep making history. As like you said, the first NWSL team to be invited to go to the White House and celebrate the 2023 championship. That's amazing news. Uh it is incredible and it shows the visibility that the NWSL is creating in the US. And I just hope all these players that go just have a good time at the white house yeah i mean first gentleman was at a gotham game recently so oh, i know yes. he, he is right. a women's soccer fan so that probably helped in this and yeah just excited about the whole opportunity and the visibility and good to see midge burst back at the white house again and ali krieger <laughs> she is back with gotham fc not on the field but she will be a team ambassador, the first one. She's going to be there to elevate the club, women's sports, and act as a connection for the media on and off the pitch. So essentially, she's going to be the front person when uh, when media is asked about Gotham FC, when things are going well, where she's going to do press conferences and things like that. So having her as the face of that operation is impressive. I'm just happy for her. Uh, Allie's killing it, so good for her. Yeah, like like you always say, once Gotham, always Gotham. Mm. I'm glad to see she's back with Gotham in this new role. Another important role being the official ambassador for Gotham. And now that she's in media, you know, and probably has a lot more connections that's beneficial for Gotham. She's she's still here in New York, in the New York area working. So she's probably going to go to probably we're going to see her at games. I think this is a good thing for Gotham and women's soccer in general. And also it paves the way for other clubs to start doing this and also paves the way for other retired players that will love to be an ambassador for for a team. Yeah, and again, it helps grow the visibility of the team. And when players look at a team like Gotham SC, they're going to see her as a front person for that and they're going to want to be connected to her and this team, which is which is good. And again, as you just said, a hashtag always Gotham for her. 
Now, this is some interesting news that dropped uh, recently, and you may have noticed on the injury report uh, that Jessica Silva was listed as an illness. Uh, it turns out she underwent surgery to remove a fibroid. Uh, former uh, former Benfica player and current Gotham player, she revealed this on social media, and the caption underneath the, her post was that life is really strange. One moment I'm at the peak of happiness, full of energy and very content, and the other, fear conquers me. I feel tiny, more vulnerable than ever, but life happens, and it's worth my drive to stay happy and the will, ability to move on and keep fighting. So obviously it's devastating news for her, and I'm glad they caught it when they did. And who knows exactly you know, what the timeline is, or when, it, when, when and if she'll be back, but we're just wishing her the best and a uh, quick recovery. Yeah, hopefully she's back soon, but also uh, she should take the time that she needs to rest and recover 100% to come back to the team. I honestly had no idea that she had surgery hopefully we get to see her back soon but uh just get as much rest yeah game changer and we haven't again we haven't had a player like mitch purse since mitch purse has been gone and jessica filled mm-hmm. a little bit of that role and I, I i can't wait to see her grow with this team i know her contract's only to the end of the year but maybe they can extend it um you know she's a special player and we want the best for her so get healthy get get healthy quick get back on the field mm-hmm. Indeed. So let's jump over to this the first game. Now, at this point, Gotham is attempting to keep pace at the top of the table. And this is, as we've talked about over and over again, this is the best season in club history by far. And yet, <laughs> Gotham has yet to clinch the playoffs, <laughs> which is crazy enough. And even if they beat Seattle in Seattle, they still could not clinch a playoff spot. That's how crazy this season's been so far. And on Seattle's side, I mean, they haven't lost since the Olympic break, so they're starting to pick up steam, they're starting to play play better, and they are fighting for their playoff lives, so they are really going for it. And this game should mean a lot more to them than it does to us, but they did just lose Huerta to Europe, which is a big loss for a team that's already lost their core players. And on the injury report, report obviously we talked about Silva, Midge was still out, Maitani's out for a hip, Hyde is still out for her foot. But other and Kelly O'Hara is out for an excused absence. She just probably just didn't want to travel. And thinking back, Ruby, looking at these two teams, it's a major difference from the championship uh, game we played with them last season. Both rosters are very, very different. I mean, or, Seattle only retains three players from their starting mm-hmm. eleven. That three players that were in their starting eleven for the championship are on their starting eleven for this game and that is McLaren and Barnes and Dickey they're basically their defense and then for Gotham's side we have five players that started the, the championship in the starting 11 well technically seven if you count Rosen's sonnet <laughs> <laughs> but in, indeed and then also uh, CC Kaiser makes the bench which is exciting as well just any thoughts on these two teams lineups all that well I Commenting on the Gotham side, just pure talent in the Gotham lineup. I like to see Ella Stevens starting. Uh, we know she was injured recently, but I'm glad she's back. I just see a strong attacking squad there. Ryan, there, Stevens, and then LaBelle there to to help. I like that lineup. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, we got two other players. Uh, sorry, they're lost. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yes, I mean, just getting to the game itself. I mean, I, I mentioned it in the in the in the, war, in the the rundown, but this was a professional performance from Gotham. Obviously, we're jumping into a, a week where they have three games, and, and then but Gotham is on the front foot right away. They really want to put it to Seattle. They want to take advantage of this this game early. Again, score a goal, get out of there, <laughs> and just not get injured. <laughs> management it's the whole thing they end up uh, pinning seattle in their own end and i know it's a couple of times i think about this uh it must be rough being a home fan of a team when gotham comes to town and they're operating the way they want to because you're just they're just sitting in their end the entire time just swimming and trying to get out and gotham's just pinning them in and that's got it that can't be fun if you're a home fan 
going out to see a game where your team's just getting dominated. <laughs> Especially Gotham, you know, we've talked about this, how Gotham is a really good team on the road. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot is going right for this club. Uh, but, I mean, again, Seattle being pinned in, they always have seven, eight players behind the ball. Gotham just simply needs a spark and, you know, maybe a little chaos. The goal sequence was absolutely gorgeous. I mean, Seattle's threatening for one of the first times in the game they're going forward. Uh, I think Davidson wins the initial header of the ball into the box. Uh, then uh, King ends up with the ball at the, the top of the box, and Carter just just takes it from her. Just a really, really strong tackle and just, just separates her from the ball. She finds Rose, and Rose gets uh, Yasmin free on the right side, and Rose is sitting somewhere in the middle of the field. She makes a run to the outside. Ryan finds her free. Uh, then Rose does that signature cut inside uh, from her on her left foot, and when she does, it drags three defenders towards her, and one of those defenders is the defensive midfielder. She finds Stevens, who plays a wicked ball uh, across the space where the defensive midfielder had stepped out to, to uh, deal with Rose. And then uh, Sheehan scores a very Sheehan goal. She <laughs> tries to pass it, goes, um, ends up being a big chaos in the box. She finds the ball, puts it through a defender's leg, scores the goal in the uh, back in that, and they have it. It's one nothing got them at halftime. Wow. That was incredible. And I feel like in this in this first half, Seattle had a few moments uh, where they looked promising, but mm -hmm. they just couldn't find the back of the net, uh, thankfully. And on the other hand, we have Gotham uh, that truly dominated this first half. I really liked their energy in this first half a lot, how they played. One of the standout moments came, like you said, from Delaney. And, and in a surprising and just a brilliant move there, she found that opening. She sent that ball in, into the lower right corner of the net. And it was an unexpected goal, honestly. And I don't think she believed it either because she didn't really celebrate. She was just kind of like cool, calm, like, yeah, I just scored. I don't know if she was like, oh, crap, I just scored. Or it was kind of like, oh, I just scored, no biggie. Or maybe she just needs to take like, or like, like a Delaney needs to go with Ella and practice some like celebration moves. I don't know. Yeah, just some fans comment that she needs to learn how to how to celebrate her goals. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we'll have to work on that. But yeah, but just thanks to her effort, Gotham was able to head into the locker room leading in this game. Yeah, we talked about Rose a couple times, and that that when she cuts across the field, she draws so much attention. And rightfully so. Obviously, if, if Rose is heading towards goal, you definitely want yeah. to be on high alert. But she just draws so much attention and frees up so many players. And it's just, it's it's wonderful. Wonderful to watch. And then the second half is like just a continuum of the first half. Gotham is professionally just, they took their foot off the gas a little bit. Um, they absorb a little bit more. They're still creating chances. Uh, and then, I mean, We'll get to it, but like Ryan has a tremendous night. She keeps finding that space and that pocket of space right in between uh, the two lines and just keeps heading towards goal. It's exactly where you want her to be. Uh, Carter and Ryan have a great one too where Carter plays her through uh, and she finds Esther for a pretty easy finish. Um, Dickie mishandled it a bit, but who cares? They win the back of the net. Uh, then um, what else? Berger had a pretty pedestrian night, except for a free kick save that she just shows off. And of course, she makes that one crazy save. She wins goal. She wins save of the week. Uh, and then Gotham moves on. Just a it, was a, it was a very professional performance for this team. Yeah, but that save was was crazy. I I really mm -hmm. thought it was going to go in, and rightfully so. She won the the save of, of the week because of that save. Um, I think Ryan doesn't get the recognition she deserves at times and I, she's just been doing such an amazing job this season um fantastic job from her uh game after game she just keeps getting better for me and like i feel that you know she really stepped up uh with midge being injured and having a season ending injury like ryan has been amazing this season 
there's an aggression to her game that was not there last season. Mm -hmm. And she's really uh, trying to put balls on frame and she's attacking more and couldn't be more proud of her. I think that's her next step in her in her ascendancy. And I think there's a chance. Uh, I think her and Ella both have a chance, an outside chance of getting some call up to the national team. I think they both are getting there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Any, uh, so on, Martin uh, misses the next game with a yellow card accumulation. Boo. <laughs> Sonnet and Davidson have been such an amazing pairing this season, and it seems like every game they're just putting up some ridiculous numbers. And I have to point out these numbers for them, too. Sonnet has been above 90% passing percentage like all season. It's been, she's been so efficient. And mm -hmm. Davidson's been close. Uh, she, this game, she was 86%. Sana was 91%. They both won 100% of their tackles. Mm. Uh, Sana had 12 recoveries. Wow. Uh, Davidson with three. Uh, Sana had 82 touches, which is a lot for a center back. And then Davidson had 106. That is like every minute she was on the ball. That's pretty crazy. So uh, a lot of workload for those two, but they were uh, they were excellent. Yeah, great numbers from both of them, but especially Sonnet, she's putting in the work. And I think this is why we didn't see her in the game against uh, Monterrey, because, I mean, she needs to rest and we need her for the next game. So I think that's why they both have been just consistent. I'll admit it. Uh, I think I've even said this probably on the podcast, too. I I said that like when, when Sonnet was picked up by this team i was like i felt like cup runneth over i'm not sure exactly where you know where she really fits in on this team but honestly she's been lights out uh she's been awesome i think she's been she's in the mvp running for this club mm -hmm. and she's been yeah she's been better than i ever expected her to be um i know she could ball but like she's been this is one of her best seasons so she's been playing yeah, she excellent. also had a great performance uh, in the Women's 2023 World Cup. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, so I was really excited after, like, when, when we got her. I was like, this is such a great player. She just had an amazing World Cup. I mean, they didn't have the, as a team, they didn't have the best result, but her individual performance was really good. So what are we taking away from this game? <laughs> I think progress. I'm going to say progress. I feel like little by little, Gotham is getting a little bit of progress. Yeah, you can talk about the, like, the professional performances. We've had performances like this earlier in the season where they didn't put goals away. But this one's like, these are the games I love. Just one goal in the first half, one goal in the second half. Let's mm -hmm. get out of there. Let's go home. Professional. Let's done it. <laughs> put, a, put a lid out. We're done. Uh, and I think the main thing about this game is that they live to fight another day. There was no injuries that we know of uh, from this game. But not horrible, horrible turf. Uh, and I think I mentioned this to you at the game. I think this is the first time Berger played on turf <laughs> in her probably her life. Uh, she was having trouble with it early on in the game, but I hate field turf. Uh, so I'm just glad that we're done with that, hopefully, for a little bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, any stats of the game, Ruby? So stat of this game is Gotham had 12 total shots and six of them on target. And of course, two goals. Yeah, that's a huge deal for this team who was having trouble getting balls on frame. That is good, considering that Seattle was putting eight, nine players behind the ball at all mm -hmm. times. Uh, very good for this team from doing that. And I, I'm just going to go back to uh, to Davidson, 106, 106 touches. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's crazy. <laughs> Davidson had a heck of a game. So player of the game, fans chose Sheehan, 40% uh, uh, as the player of the match. Do you agree? I'm going to have to give it to two players. I'm going to say Sheehan and Ryan. Yeah, I'm with you on that. 100%. Both players, uh, about 80% passing, 100% shot accuracy. Both got their shots on target. Sheehan won seven, had seven recoveries. Uh, Ryan had six recoveries. They both had about 70 touches. Sheehan has the goal. Ryan has the assist. Uh, Ryan had five chances created, which is a lot. Wow. Uh, they both won 100% of their tackles, so... Uh, a good job for both of them. I got it like you, just tied. Well done, those two. Now, at this point, uh, according to our friend Chris Henderson, uh, he says that the magic playoff number for Gotham is one, which means I think Gotham needs one more point to clinch the playoffs. Okay. Which, 
it's still it's still crazy that we haven't done it yet. But we're making the playoffs, putting it out there. And top of the standings, Orlando is still up there, and Gotham is only eight points away and six games left. It is possible. If Orlando has to have a lot of things go wrong for them, but it's still possible. Uh, and I think this weekend is the, I think the game of the weekend is Washington and KC. I think that's going to be a barn burner. That's going to be so mm. much fun. I can't wait to watch that one. That's, t- that's actually tonight. Uh, so as soon as we're done with this podcast, I'm going to eat some food, go watch that game <laughs> and do homework. Oh, yeah. But, that's going to uh, be. Yeah. So yeah, Gotham's in a good spot right now. Uh, 40 points in total, first time in club history, 12 wins, the most in club history. Right now, Ellis Stevens is leading in goals at six, and Ryan is, has the assist lead at four. Now that we're looking at it, Ruby, I think Esther has five goals. Can Stevens hold the lead, or is Esther Ooh. going for the goal lead? Wait, I think, I'm not sure if Esther has, like, in all competitions, because there's a few competitions going on right now, or just regular season? Regular season. Oh, wow. Okay. I might still be able to win. I said at the <laughs> beginning of the season that Stere was going to be the lead goals yeah. in the, you know, lead the, the, the team in goals here. And it's probably going to be true. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We've got six games left, so there's 18 points still on the board. Uh, then... We have the craziness that is the Ch- CONCACAF Champions Cup. Gotham comes in in second place with a, with a single win. And Tigres is up top with two wins. Then, see, I think at this point, Gotham just needs another professional performance. They, they did well against Seattle. They just need to get through this. Just get a win, move on. Again, these are the top two teams move on into the group, so they don't have to they don't have to win, but it's good to get a point to keep pace with uh, at least keep pace with to a T Grays. And T Grays looks good out of the group. Um they're doing well right now. They beat Monterey four nothing. Uh mm-hmm. and that's our, our opponent for this game. And they also beat Frazier's our next opponent, five nothing. Uh so this is a so if they win their next game, they're gonna go through or get points. This is an interesting lineup because we have Esther and Torres up top, and then we have Williams, Zerboni, Martin, and Dunn across the middle. Nice Wonger, Davidson, Freeman, and Bernina across the back, and Berger in goal. Your thoughts on this lineup, Ruby? Yeah, we have some new faces in this starting lineup. We have here Torres getting a start with this CONCACAF Champions Cup. I love to see Freeman and also Williams starting in this lineup. Yeah, I don't know if I think we might have missed Torres on our free agency list. If we didn't, maybe my brain's just broken right now. But Torres, I really like Torres as a person and I really like her as a player. I feel I think I mentioned this to you yesterday, but I feel like she's a little bit too much by the books. Uh like she does she does exactly what you're expecting her to do. She plays in the mm-hmm. right spot, she plays the right ball, she plays the safe ball. But there were times in this game where she was inside the 18, the ball came to her foot, and the first thing she was thinking is like, how do I get rid of this ball? <laughs> and how, like, who do I pass this to? Who, how do I get rid of this ball when she <laughs> should have just took a one-time shot at goal? Yep. I think she needs to be a little bit more aggressive and you know, start doing a Delaney and start getting balls on frame. But I think she's got a bright future. Just I think she needs to be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, that plus I believe she hasn't gotten a lot a lot of time yeah. of playing time uh this season so that kind of affects you know the performance too when you're not doing it constantly i don't want her to go but i do i do want her to get minutes and if it's that if that's going to happen with another team i think she should go for it yeah and surprisingly enough i i i kind of like her better at left back than in the center of the pitch where she's been for her entire career so far i mean she could change that but We'll see. Uh, but let's talk about this <laughs> this match. <laughs> it was a pretty uh, 3,000 people in attendance, and they watched a very uneventful match. I know this <laughs> match happened. I didn't dream this match. It did happen. But man, uh, Gotham looked really, really, really tired. Like they were not pressing like normally. They weren't tracking back as quickly as they should. Uh, I think the coach spent a lot of time just trying to implore the team to keep up the pace and pick up the pace. And uh, Monterey just 
did enough. They did well enough. Uh, they were like, I think I mentioned this, but like there were times where they were playing balls out of the back and they were very shaky out of the back and then they would make a mistake and I'm like, a normal Gotham <laughs> uh, you know, penalizes this team for those kind of mistakes, but Gotham was just really slow this game and not taking advantage of those mistakes. Uh, you know, Berger gets tested once and she makes a very hard save, look very routine. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to say shout out to Cloud9. Uh, they brought a lot of energy to yeah. a pretty dull evening. What do you think, Ruby? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're all tired, Gary. They're tired. We're tired. And unfortunately, yeah, the team was tired. And fortunately for Monterrey, um, they didn't take advantage of it. Sorry, guys. You, This was your chance. Like, if you guys wanted to win against Gotham, I think that was their chance to win against Gotham because they look really tired on, on the field. Um, Gotham did have some almost goals in the second half. Uh, Kaiser uh, had a close one. Dunn had another one pretty close. Um, I think I think there was one more, but I can't remember. Um like I told you yesterday, I like Kaiser, Stevens, LaBelle, and Sheehan when they were playing. Those last last 10 to 15 minutes of the game, those were exciting. It's, it's funny. Uh, Post-game, I got to talk to CC in the mix zone. And I, re- I remarked on how like her, their profile, like her profile is similar to Ella Stevens. Mm-hmm. And she said, yes, yeah, because that's one of the reasons like that made me so excited to, to come here because mm-hmm. I saw the ascendance of, of Ella. And, you know, I think that I fit a similar role. We have a similar game style. And so that was one of the, one of the many reasons that she came here. And I sometimes in the field, you can like, if you're looking from far away, you're like, is that Stevens or is that CC? <laughs> yes. Um, there was a sequence of play. I think it was done, done to Stevens. Then Stevens finds uh, Kaiser. And they had a little back and forth there. I was like, wow. Like, <laughs> if they get a little more time playing together, like mesh together and gel, they're going to be really good. Yeah. Yeah, she's a good player, and uh, hopefully we get to have her on the podcast soon. She seems like a really a really nice person, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so hopefully we get to meet her. And post game, I was talking to Coach Amaros, and I I mentioned that the the team looked a little sluggish, and that was like he's like agreed with it, but he's, but uh, he basically turned it into like he's just so proud of the team for fighting through all these crazy you know these crazy tournaments, these crazy games, and the travel, and it's just not tough, and he's just so proud of the team for even getting through the games and. Uh, I, I appreciated that answer because I, I agree. This is this is insane. The schedule that, that they're going on. Mm-hmm. This isn't like a normal like okay, you got midweek games like you're playing in Seattle, whatever. Like they're going to like Costa Rica, <laughs> Costa Rica, and Jamaica, and, and Jamaica midweek, which is just it's nuts. And one thing he did mention was that the original schedule for the league was made without talking to CONCACAF and CONCACAF did not talk to the league when they made this tournament. So, so basically once they had the league's schedule set, they had to try to fit these games in when they could. So there was like no, no choice to move games around or give themselves a little space. So he says like in the future, he hopes that they can coordinate. So this is not so much like all on the players and the teams. Typical CONCACAF. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, a point is a point. They're still in a good position to get through. And, you know, if they take care of, of Frazier's in Jamaica, which they should, then I think they're in a good spot to get through. And, again, you only have to finish top two. Then mm-hmm. you move on to the semifinals. Uh, I think they're in a good spot to do that. So they haven't given up a goal yet, so keep it going. <laughs> uh, any other um, – oh, so, which, any stats from this match? And it was not much as far as stats. Uh, my stat for this game is they had uh, Gotham had ten corners in this game. Uh, we talked about it. We were not fans of that short kick corner they were doing. Yeah, I felt like <laughs> I felt like Gotham definitely had chances. There was there was there was chances in this match, and I did see that. I think the big thing is again back to old Gotham, where you get eleven shots and one on target. <laughs> That's bit frustrating and i'm gonna do something completely i think i think i've ever done i'm actually going to talk about refs twice in two weeks (laughs) 
I felt like the Gotham was getting a little bit cocky calfed in like the first half. This ref was just refusing to hand out cards when <laughs> there yeah. was some pretty rough and on the side slide tackles that were pretty dangerous. Uh, and she just let a lot of let go. But, you know, it is it is what it is. Uh, player of the match, uh, fans chose Berger as the player of the match. She made, she made like one save and it was a good one. But do you agree? I saw a comment on Twitter. Uh-huh. Someone said, is there an option for no one? That's a bit rough. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of funny though. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, honestly, I don't know. No one really stood out this game. <laughs> but I think... It would be Sorboni for me. She was up and down the field, like doing her thing, um, shooting from outside the 18, trying to like make a goal. I, I think I'll give it to Sorboni. Give it to the whole team for them just getting through that craziness of a match. Uh, and then I really am impressed with Carter. I think she fits in perfectly with the squad. She is, uh, she is a very, very strong tackler and an incredible, a very smart 1v1 defender. Uh, she's she was excellent all nights. Uh, I will give it to everybody slash Carter. I think Carter <laughs> really stood out for me at least. Now, this is a really uh, interesting thing that's happened. We keep bringing this up on the podcast because it's a very interesting thing about this league and the growth. Looks like the Courage are getting sold for a hundred and five million dollars, and that's just for sixty percent stake wow. ownership. Okay. Last year, Sportico uh, rated them at 50 million or evaluated them at 50 million. So that is a major growth in one year. Uh, this is also the owner, the new owner of the Courage was trying to buy Angel City, but lost out on that. So now he's went for the Courage. But this is just a huge, a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Huge deal. That, that even is clubs like the Courage are, are getting sold for that much. Exactly. I mean, you. Th- this is just a year ago, fifty-two million, and just think about that as well. Because maybe four years ago, maybe these teams were like valued at like five to ten million dollars. So it's just craziness how much the game has grown, and still the potential that it has like to keep growing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's beneficial for all the teams in the league because now their evaluation just goes up as well. And if, obviously uh, with Gotham's ownership, I mean, they've been, uh, Governor Murphy has been a, a owner for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure his investment was not that much when Mm-mm. he first got in here. So he's going <laughs> to, if he does eventually ever sell, he's going to make a ton, a ton of money. He's going to get a lot of return on that investment. So just wow. I can't even imagine what Gotham could be going for. It probably has to be close to that Angel City number. Mm-hmm. Probably. Uh, so let's jump ahead to this weekend. Our opponent is 13th place. <laughs> the Utah Royals, who have been mm-hmm. kind of a mess. Uh, they lost their head coach. And this is also something I do want to point out. Um, I said this myself. I thought that uh, Amy Rodriguez got a, got a pretty raw deal um, when she first started. And it's, it's a tough spot to be in. I don't think they gave her the roster to compete at the beginning of the season. They've made some strides, but I don't know. Uh, and Juan Carlos mentioned that as well when I asked him about, like, they're coming to town. How do you handle a team that, you know, has so many different moving parts and, new co- you know, interim coaches and stuff like that? He just remarked on the players that they have. Tejada is an incredible player. Uh, she's new to the team. But uh, I did ask him about Mandy Hawk coming back to Gotham, I come back to Red Bull Arena, and he was very cordial about welcoming her back, and she meant so much to this team last season, and he's just happy to see her back in, in the arena. I think we all are, because uh, they have a bunch of Gotham players. I, I call them Gotham B. Uh, Dorsey, I don't know if she'll make the trip, but hopefully she does. She needs to get her ring, uh, and Haught needs to get mm-hmm. her ring. Right. Uh, obviously, it'd be good to see Paige Monahan back in this arena. Uh, she's doing really well. She's finding a really good spot. Uh, on on the Royals, and she's had a, she's having a pretty good season as the mm-hmm. captain of that team. So, just y- your thoughts about uh, Utah coming to town? Yeah, I'm so glad you're giving shout outs to to Paige because she really deserves it. Uh, she was such a great player here in Gotham too, and now like just looking at how much she has grown 
and becoming a veteran in, in within her team, being the captain, it's just amazing. She was always a player that took way, way too much time with fans after the games, mm-hmm. and we, we appreciate her. And she got a... <sighs> I always feel bad for players when they go to racing in Louisville. I'm sorry. I'm putting, I'm putting that out there. But <laughs> but yeah, so I'm glad that she's in a place where she's shining and she's in leadership now and she's growing her game and good, again, good for her. I think this is, on paper, obviously this is a game that Gotham should win. Yeah. But Gotham is tired, y'all. <laughs> That's true. They're they're coming and they're, they're getting a tired Gotham. So yeah, yeah anything could happen. The good news is they get a six-day break, which is the longest they're going to get <laughs> for a while. <laughs> and then they go start the crazy away at KC, then away in Jamaica, and then back uh, home for Bay FC in one week, which is pretty insane. Uh, and then getting over to uh, the CONCAT Champions Cup, Gotham faces Frasers next. They got to go to Jamaica for that. Uh, but they're in a good spot. I mean, any thoughts on, you know, going to Jamaica? I think, well, going to Jamaica for a game, It's. I think the thought of it sounds pretty cool. You're going to Jamaica, but, of course, they're going to go play. Uh, a lot of travel for them. Um, mm-hmm. They're facing a team that has lost their last three games, so I don't think this is going to be difficult for Gotham. They should be able to go and 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 win this this game against them. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, playing in Jamaica is tough, no matter if you're full strength or not. Mm. It's just a tough place to play in. Their fields aren't very good. Yep, <laughs> that's true. Uh, and uh, they usually do bring a crowd, so it should be an interesting an interesting match there. But uh, and what are we manifesting uh, for this week? For this oh, weekend? Uh, this weekend, um, of course, a win in general some rest for all these players they deserve it as much as they can because this schedule is really tight yeah just hope the team gets a little bit of recovery uh no injuries let's go um i did notice that the sonnet is a one card away from a yellow card suspension so oh i kind of like part of me wants to just get it out of the way that's true like just get it over now but Yeah. No, not really now because we're playing KC next. We're going to need her for that game. No doubt. <laughs> Absolutely. So, all right. So let's. Uh, so I just want to make one quick shout out, random thought uh, before we go. I know I've said publicly more than once that it's been difficult working with Gotham City over the past maybe year and a half. Uh, we started off really, really well with the club. We built a really good relationship and we were getting, you know, like one player a month and uh, things were going really well for us. And, and the idea was floated. Uh, how sincere the idea was, I don't know, because I'll never know. Uh, but it was floated the idea that we would become a, a the, like the preferred podcast of the team. And mm-hmm. I, I, immediately t- I turned it down because I was in the middle of college and I can't do anything more than I'm currently doing. But again, how sincere that was, I don't know. So for the past year and a half, it's been really tough working with this club. Over this, like this year, the communications director had left the team. And in the interim, uh, Riley, who was the assistant communications director, is now, I guess, running the entire show there. And I just want to put out there that she's doing an amazing job. And I, re- I really like her as a person. And I just want to let her know that I'm rooting for her. And it's been tough this season with, the crazy amount of games we that mm-hmm. they've been playing it's like we, we can only do interviews during the day so like i have off one day a week so it has to be a short window so things are going to get better and we're going to be getting more interviews soon but i'm hoping that the fans fans have been patient with us and we're being patient with the club and again riley keep doing what you're doing you're going to be amazing we're rooting for you been theme gary we're all tired she's been working really hard and we appreciate we appreciate everything she does yeah um yeah we saw her yesterday at the game we was we were talking to her for a little bit um yeah shout out to you riley yeah indeed any other random thoughts before we go no i don't have any more <laughs> okay let's get out of here all right let's go see you all sunday 
Soccer Over Gotham is brought to you by a dedicated team of Gotham SC enthusiasts who aim to bring you the latest news, analysis, and in-depth discussions about Gotham SC and the National Women's Soccer League. This podcast is hosted by Ruby Pinto, Noella Franco, and Gary Gibson. This show is produced and edited by Gary Gibson. For more Gotham SC content, follow the show on social media at Soccer Over Gotham on Instagram, Threads, and YouTube. Also, Over Gotham Pod on Twitter, X, to join the community. For news and updates, visit SoccerOverGotham.com. To support the show, please rate us five stars on Spotify and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Purchase merch at the show's official Tee Public store. Search all four words, Soccer Over Gotham Podcast. Subscribe so that you don't miss a thing and share the show with anyone who might listen. Word of mouth is everything. Thank you for making it this far. We will see you on the next one.